Okay, we're close enough to initiate the scan. Ah, hello World Lady Web, I'm Dr. Shadow, the internet personality with crippling depression. But nothing cheers me up quite like the asylum. I'm long past the period where I'm upset that their mockbusters are clear cash grabs capitalizing on much bigger, far more popular films to get anyone to even notice their output. That's like being upset that McDonald's is bad for you. Now, I take comfort in knowing that whatever they put out, they put just enough effort into it to make sure it is technically a film. But even then, depending on who they hired out of a back alley for 15 bucks and a catered lunch, you might actually get some real gems out of their output now and then. Or, you know, zirconia, but better than the expected coprolite. That brings us to today's review, Monster Island. Released in 2019 to capitalize on the release of Godzilla King of the Monsters, Monster Island is... ah, screw this. It's an asylum flick that's just kaiju enough to pass the smell test. Big monsters fight each other at some point, but most of what we get is scenes involving a small group of important humans who talk science bits back and forth to explain how they got themselves into the monster predicament in the first place. It's come to think of it, it's exactly how this genre is supposed to pan out, so... We might actually have another battle Star Wars on our hands here. So. Let's take a look at Monster Island and see if we do. The movie opens up 20,000 years ago. We see giant monsters fighting. Just to point out that yes, you are watching the correct movie as we suddenly jump to present day where a crew is piloting a remote sub at the Chromatic Trench. Riley, played by Chris Fisher, and Cherise, played by Donna Comac Thompson. They're about ready to call it quits on their expedition. But wait! Cherise spots volcanic activity, exactly what they were looking for! That being explained by the handy dandy news broadcast, Susan Meyerhold, played by Megan Oberholzer, drills, um, <coughs> I mean, interviews Adrian Boucher, who plays Billy Ford, are a sort of Jeff Bezos turned Elon Musk for this tale, making it in big business before deciding to strip mine the ocean floor for precious minerals. If mankind needs to continue using technology Keep like going. we have today, we have to find new sources of raw materials. Ocean mining is the Keep answer. Going. Assuming you can hear the exposition over the submarine operators operating over it. On that note, hey, they found the who's a what's it nobules of volcanic mineral goodness. So Charisse is ready to dig in. However, Riley is apprehensive, pointing out that they are only supposed to survey the mining spot. They haven't actually received permission to mine yet. Why go through all that if this claim is a dud? Let's dig, let's bring up some of that nugget. I mean, the fines would be a lot less than what it would cost to bring us back out here. Those are either some lenient fines or some incredibly inefficient submarines you got there. So Riley's like, fine, and Cherie scoops up a big old bunch of money nugs. However, something isn't right about this. part of the ocean needs to be left alone. For the record, the experts had no freaking idea about the giant sea monster. They just think submarines might upset the delicate ecological balance. So the sub's fucking crushed. Right when Ford decides, hey, why not check out my illegal mining operation? I'll take you on a tour right here. Got my operators working over Starlink or something, shooting signals down to buoys that then transmit signals to subs, which appear to be offline at the moment. Uh, well, okay, sometimes there's a hiccup here or there, but don't you worry, we're on it. We have a problem. A very big problem. Oh God, what did Taco Bell take off the menu this time? So, interview ends a bit anticlimactically. Hearing his sub was lost is bad enough, but now Ford has to deal with hearing his two operators argue over which one of them gets to take responsibility for this. Ford's like, guys, guys, I love you both equally. Now suit up, it's time to salvage the sub. This introduces us to the ship captain, Mato, played by Jonathan Pienaar, and the navigator, Thompson, played by Ryan Kruger. But a surprise to Ford is Sarah Murray, played by Natalie Robbie. She's here by order of the government, as he did lose a mining sub, and mining is something he's still not supposed to be doing out here, and therefore, he has to bring her aboard or there will be fines. That, and they'll impound his ships, his subs, his drones, anything and everything he holds dear, and be up his ass from this point until the end of time! Ford wants to know, though, can she tell him who else might have been looking at this area for mining operations? I can do that. Well, in that case, welcome to Benthic Prospecting. Gotta love how the threats to his empire are mm, upsetting, but there's still no deal until he gets access to Super Google. 
Got to be some pretty fast buyer's remorse, too, as less than a minute later we learned that absolutely no one else filed anything showing interest in mining in this region. So, uh, need some new mysteries. Ah, just why is Sarah a marine environmental observer? That job sucks! Sarah agrees, but her degree sucked worse. Geomythology. She could either do this or teach geomythology. The historic use of myths and legends to explain natural disasters. Well, they don't need old tales of mountain gods and sea monsters anywhere. They have modern technology. Sonar scans that show the entire top of the underwater mountain they found has just up and disappeared. Sure no one else has applied to mine this region. Nothing on our books. Well, it wouldn't be, would there? I mean, look at the scope of that destruction. Well, who the fuck's mining down here? The EDF? That in mind, Ford is like... Fuck the remote sub, let's take the one that will risk our lives for no apparent reason, because seeing what's going on out of a porthole is just, it, it just feels better than a camera feed, you know? Riley's like, that's a pretty fucking stupid idea, but Ford stands firm. So they all funnel into the sub, Riley, Sharice, Ford, and Sarah, before pointing out that, hey, they're gonna be going far beyond the 3,000 meters they have with this thing before, all the way to 3,400, just for funsies. But it's been tested way beyond spec. This thing's designed to take the pressure at at least 4,000 meters. We could run into a mountain and still be okay. I don't care how much money you threw at it, the set and CGI only look impressive for an asylum film. The flying laser drill submarines from Godzilla Final Wars, though? <laughs> Those were awesome. They may not have laser drills or much better than surplus LEDs, but they do have that handy-dandy sonar scanner determining, yes, that volcano top is just gone. And looky here, there's a new mountain that wasn't there before. Strange thing. May as well move in for a closer look. Activating the forward lights. Ah! Thank God we just established this thing couldn't smack it to a mountain and survive! The force of this is far too great, and they have no control over the submarine, being forced to surface ridiculously fast! The reason becomes apparent once they breach the surface and get a good look at exactly what brought them there. Well, technically, it's Dai Kaiju. Kaiju by itself just means monster. Luckily for them, as Sarah is a geomythologist, she just so happens to have insight on the legend of this very creature. Which might be helpful if Riley could stop freaking out for two seconds. Even the captain of the ship is taking things better than him, just kind of confused as to why a massive sea monster has surfaced, and when it slams its tentacle down, creating a tsunami, he just rides over that like it's nothing. If it does that again, I don't think we're going to make it. Ah, don't worry. The Asylum can't afford to render a version where the boat capsizes, so if they do do that again, they're just gonna recycle the same clip and you'll be fine. Realizing the danger tsunamis pose to coastal cities, Ford calls up the authorities like, Hey, bad news! Big fucking wave about to murder the shit out of everyone. Might want to evacuate. They're like, but there aren't any earthquakes to make those. And he's like, yeah, not an earthquake. A giant goddamn monster. A kaiju, even. Ever seen Gamera vs. Virus? It's kind of like Virus, but less creative. Sorry, is, is this a joke? I wish it were. Then I'd at least understand the asshole on the internet who keeps laughing at everything. Ford's like, BT Dubs, uh, could you hook me up with General Horn? My company provides a lot of tech for the Coast Guard, so I kind of feel like he owes me. This introduces General Horn, played by Eric Roberts! Guess he's on the asylum shortlist for big-ish names willing to show up for a day of filming and a paycheck. Not to discount Horde's subordinate, Lieutenant Maxwell. He's played by Toshi Toda. You know, the random Japanese guy from Tristar's Godzilla. Lends just as much credibility here as he did there. So they can talk later. First, Ford's got to open the hatch and figure out what their situation is. Yep, still on a kaiju. But there's also fighter jets coming in and firing missiles at it, blowing holes in the tentacles. That is not good. Is that? It's magma. It's got magma for blood. Oh no, not magma for blood! Jeez, what's next? Is it gonna spit tornadoes and fart lightning? As the monster is gonna melt the sub, and the Coast Guard abso fucking lootly refuses to call off the airstrikes, Ford makes the command decision to empty the ballast tanks! Sharice warns that this will affect their underwater control, but he doesn't care. The tanks are emptied out and... This somehow turns their propellers into... Jets. Right. <laughs> what a surprise, an asylum movie that has a complete fucking disregard for the laws of physics. At least until it's plot relevant, as now, in the water, Ford demands they dive as fast as they can. 
when the water in the tank's positive buoyancy is killing us! They're gonna need to clear that thing! Oh no, that's right! They dumped all their water and now, underwater, in the middle of the ocean, where the hell are they gonna find some other water to replace it with? Unable to locate water, they give up on diving deeper and instead turn away from the monster, revealing that more submarines have shown up. Navy submarines firing torpedoes at the creature, which begins flailing wildly. We need to move. We can't go any faster. Yes, we can. Oh, the, the, the throttle wasn't actually full, so they, they could go faster. So they narrowly escape while the military sub is smashed in half by a giant tentacle. So, yeah, they're fucking dead. Any doubts to that are squashed as the movie spends several minutes trying to contact them, but, uh, yeah, like I said, fucking dead. Well, that just leaves them to figure out what to do about this whole, uh, giant damn monster gonna destroy the coastal city in six, six hours problem. We know it has magma for blood. Yeah, how does that thing even exist? Life forms that live in volcanic vents can exist outside of known biology. Well, yeah, but that doesn't just give it a get out of making any fucking sense free card. But legends speak of shit that makes no fucking sense. Therefore, it does. Enough of that for now. Hey, Horn calls up. He's like, so, uh, my sub's dead. It's too bad. Anyway, got any pointers on the monster? Ford's like, well, it's fucking big. Bleeds magma. Instant healing. Legends speak of its incredible destructive power. Also, just throwing us out there, uh, we got some ROVs and stuff already here. We could help. Horn turns down the offer like, nah, let the military take care of it. Also, just gonna mention, if you were responsible for this creature in any way, you will be sent to super jail. So get out of there before we accidentally blow you up. Yes, sir. Might have helped if they had established any reason at all that Horn doesn't like Ford. As it stands, he's just kind of a stupid asshole. Oh, let's ask him. Hello, General Horn. I'm Decker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. Who? The internet personality... You know, never mind. Have you heard of the YouTube algorithm? My people tell me that it's primed to blow at any minute. Well, you can help me in that regard by liking this video. I can do that. No, it's the dislikes that YouTube removed. It's a tragedy and a disaster. We're initiating a salvage operation. You can still like videos all you want. And subscribe, too. I'll get back to you as soon as I have anything to report. That piss and publicity hog- As Horn refuses to be friends, Ford's like, well, I guess we gotta take on the kaiju ourselves. Somehow, everyone's okay with this, ignoring the fact that the military is already doing this job. Also, there is the slight problem that they still have absolutely no idea what they're doing. But hey, remember that geo-mythology? Might hold the key to defeating the kaiju in the legends. Problem with that is, uh, Sarah really didn't pay all that much attention to the kaiju legend details. In fact, most of the geo-mythology community regards them as superstitious ramblings and not nearly as important as those theoretical earthquakes or whatever. In fact, the only person she can remember who really paid them any mind was her professor who she got fired for all that kaiju nonsense. Fun times! Ford's like, that's great! You two know each other! You get to tracking them down and having a chat. I'm going to take the operators off for a different scene where we're going to use up one of our spare Amazon delivery drones to scope out the kaiju for weaknesses. How long before we range that thing? I, I know it's supposed to do that, but still, comedic timing. While they test how waterproof their tech really is, Sarah meets back up with her old professor, Reina Hangarora, played by Margot Wood. Sarah's like, yeah, so you were right. Reina's like, doll just so. And they sit down for some tea before digging through Reina's collection of monster manuals, trying to figure out exactly what it is that they're dealing with. The Tengo. The arrival of the Tengo has always coincided with the civilization's downfall. Ancient people didn't have the technology we have today. Of course! The solution has been sitting in front of us this entire time! Alexa, how do you defeat a kaiju? Fortunately, Reina does have the answer for that. The ancient legends speak of another kaiju. One of those convenient sleeping ones that can be awakened and is the natural enemy of the Tango, the Living Mountain. So the ancient civilization did know how to defeat it. They just, uh, didn't. Anyway, how are Ford and the operators holding up? They're scanning the kaiju for weaknesses. So far, it seems that the underside is covered in big frickin' metal teeth. So that's a problem. Riley also says they shouldn't pilot the drone any closer. So of course Ford's like, get in closer. We must learn more. If we lose this ROV, we only have one left. Well, that's great. We can use the spare one for the super important maneuver later that has to work, can't fail. We gotta destroy this one. That way that is that much more important. As it turns out, the teeth surround 
a mouth. Ford's like, well, I've played enough video games to recognize a weak spot when I see one. Also, the monster bites down and destroys the ROV. Only one left now. Guess they gotta use it for something extra super important. In the meantime, hey, Horn, old buddy, old pal, got some new info. This thing lives off eating volcanoes, so it's probably going to a super volcano complex. Now, it's covered in metallic glass, which in this universe means it's super invincible. Except for the handy dandy weak point, which we may be able to attack for massive damage. Stay out of the operating theater. The last thing your friends in Parliament want to hear is that you and your people were taking out my friendly fire. You got that? I mean, uh, yeah, he didn't actually say anything about going there. Do you just threaten to shoot people in general in your day-to-day -day life? Hearing this, Ford decides, okay, gotta use that last drone to bring in a payload and blow the thing up! However, the Navy has the mystical technology of radar, allowing them to see Ford's drone zipping through the area in a direct course for the monster. So, may as well send some spare troops to stop him from trying to save the day like an asshole! One. Everyone, hands up! Away from your stations! Did it work? Maybe? I'm just gonna go on the assumption that the Asylum figured out a new way to save money. Simply don't show the big epic explosion shot. They were all under arrest for interfering with the operation. Also, side note, it worked. Knocked that kaiju right on its ass. Except for one little detail. It triggers a massive egg volley that goes everywhere. Hey, that means that the kaiju is... Ew. As such, Horn calls up Ford like, Hey, asshole, thanks a lot. Now there are monster eggs everywhere. Ford is like, General, if the eggs hatch, that could be bad. Because they need to eat. So probably the same super volcano we figured out from earlier. Horn's like, that's nice. You're still under arrest, though, as the eggs fall everywhere and hatch. <laughs> Releasing motherfucking dragons. I'm getting flashbacks to EDF 2025. Killing the army, dudes! The dragon forces Ford and friends to flee, eventually taking out the final army dude, and even worse, frying Riley as he flees in the tunnels. Not much of a loss. You should all feel relieved. I edited around most of his dialogue for this movie because he spent like the entire time just whining and pissing his pants like he was gonna die or something. That does mean that Ford and Cherise are the only two who managed to escape the beast, hiding by another dragon egg. But that's not important yet. First, he's got to meet back up with Sarah and Rene. First, the good news. Where's Riley? He didn't make it. Bad news is he was merely roasted off screen. What I wouldn't give to watch a dragon rip him to shreds. Or at the very least, just chuck him into a wood chipper. Ford's like, how do we stop the monster? And Rena's like, easy, just gotta release another monster. One that's been sleeping for millennia on Monster Island. This one's probably nice. People wrote such nice things about it. So how do we awaken a living mountain? The blood of the Caillou will cause it to awaken. The best part of waking up is magma for your blood. But how to procure a blood sample when it is such a hot commodity? Why, the eggs, of course. They just so happen to have established that handy dandy unhatched egg minutes ago. How convenient. In the meantime, the army is getting its ass absolutely handed to it by the dragons. And Horn actually calls Ford up this time, giving advice to the winning team. Seems they have a sort of hive mind, and attacking one causes the whole lot of them to aggro. So be careful out there. Okay, that's nice. Now it's time to get the egg into the eye of the mountain. Probably this crater thing, but how to get the magma out? I figure simply dunk it to cause the thermal difference to crack it, then drop it in the crater. Only problem is obviously cracking it over the ocean means it's fucking cracked open, and they don't have time to throw it in the crater, running for their life until the dragon's magma breath spreads magma that does rip down the mountain, awakening the living mountain who smashes the dragon, which causes all the other dragons to attack, thanks to that handy dandy hive mind that they established just minutes ago. How convenient! Nice! That was easy. Still got 10 minutes of movie left to go. Oh, wait. So, you know that big damn dead kaiju that shot out all the dragon eggs? Well, 
uh, grown a giant pair of dragon wings because it's not dead flying all the way to the final battle on Monster Island. And this thing is far more dangerous than the dragons, kicking the shit out of the living mountain. That's because technically it's not awake, maybe? So gotta get the blood in the eye. So grab some handy dandy obsidian, conveniently already shaped as a spearhead, get that magma blood on it, and whip up a longbow out of the surrounding area to fire one incredibly long range, surprisingly accurate shot right into its eye. Thus, the living mountain is extra super awake and explodes. This means it wins. I guess, uh, and when the dust settles, all that remains is a colossal kaiju egg. You will see. The whole world is Monster Island. Oh, wouldn't that technically make it Monster Planet? Or is that close enough that Netflix is gonna sue you? Anyway, that was Monster Island. It ain't bad for the asylum. I didn't enjoy this one nearly on the same level as Battle Star Wars, but I have to say, this actually wasn't a horrible flick. The acting was mediocre, the characters were basic, and the motivations questionable at best, but as the movie progressed, I actually did find myself liking it more and more. As a monster movie, it did the job actually pretty admirably, with odd little quirks to its beasts, as well as shifts coming out of left field that changed the situation drastically. I was intrigued when eggs suddenly appeared, and when I found out they hatched into motherfucking dragons, that's when I knew that this was actually another Asylum movie that I liked. Not to say that it was a high-quality monster flick, the creature side was done all right for the Asylum, but the human side? Oh, well, that's just plain old Asylum. Most characters are so plainly done it's hard to care about them, and the big memorable performance comes from Chris Fisher for making Riley so goddamn grating on my patience. Despite these flaws, though, this is another genre that, uh, given the right script, the Asylum's strength shines through, and their weaknesses aren't as noticeable. Yeah, Eric Roberts was obviously in one set where they filmed all his scenes in an afternoon. Yeah, the submarine was plywood with LED lighting. Yeah, we see bad CGI monsters fighting and cut to humans standing around looking at it. That's what this genre is all about. Coming in at three giant fucking dragon eggs out of five. I mean, I have seen worse. Although, come to think of it, most of that was also made by the Asylum. Oh. Thank you all for watching. I've been Decker Shadow. And remember... Propellers don't magically turn into jets just because it would be convenient for the plot. Sorry, is, is this a joke? I wish it were. Hey, Horn, did you like the video yet? Or subscribe? This is a military operation. Stay out of it. Oh, don't be that way. Is there something going on with you at the moment? You can bet your bitches there is the kaiju. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, that is a pretty big problem right there. Look, pal, I hate to say this, but I need your advice. Well, I've been reviewing movies for over 10 years. Ask away. Look, I don't want to tell you what to do, but if it were me, I'd steer clear of that dog and pony show. You can learn a lot from these movies. Trust me, watch Godzilla, why don't you? You could also check out my review of Godzilla Final Wars. That's big, explosive, and ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. Or you could just pick the algorithmically selected recommended video. What? Kaiju or not, I need the views. I mean, have you seen what happens when you take a break from YouTube? That's depressing. Did I try have a Patreon? Son of a bitch.